Hey guys, Loza Bing here, and we are back with the next episode of Doctor Who. So yeah, let's go straight into this. So, last week's... It was alright. Like, some people were calling it the worst episode ever, and I have to say, excuse me, do, do, do you forget in the forest of the shite? Do you forget the Doctor, the Widow, and the wardrobe in disrepair? Do you not remember those episodes? I think they were slightly worse than... Well, I, and when I say slightly worse, I mean they were appalling. I'm, I'm sorry, it's been like, what, four years and I still don't get how that girl appeared at the end from a bush, you know? Was she there the whole time? You telling me she was just, you know what? Her family was in so much distress, her sister went mental and like she was just hiding in the bush the whole time? What was she doing? Going in and out and nicking food when the family weren't there? Fam. I need answers. I still need that answered. I do not understand that. But no, um, last week's, it for me, it, uh, well, from what I said in my last video, it had, it, it had a lot of potential and I feel like they missed that. There was a lot of things they could have did with the monster. But it was a very, it, 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 it was clear, it was a very deliberate choice by Chris Chibnall to have this monster look cute instead of, you know, being the scary evil gremlin. So that was a clear choice by him. I just felt it was lacking in terms of they it kept they kept talk like in terms of characters they kept talking and talking and talking adding more stuff in and i kind of felt like the episode dragged a bit like there was parts where i was like okay can we get on to it can we on, can we get on to something else so yeah um it just felt like a re real drag it, um sometimes chipno goes i think a bit too much into it where he goes into too much explanation and not enough doing so um, I've, uh, so I'm I'm hoping this episode's gonna be better. I've heard it might be similar to Rosa, and um, personally I liked Rosa, um, but I I've noticed that this series tends to lack decent villains. I think the weakest point so far is the villains. I think um, they're just kind of forgettable. The the this series has. Um, a Marvel problem in the sense that Marvel has tends to have forgettable villains like the only ones that we really remember are Loki and now currently Thanos but the rest of the villains were always forgettable but yeah I'm hoping this series improves more in terms of villains I would personally love to see more female villains but yeah um no I kind of like um I think people are now getting so, with this new series, I think people are getting so over offended now. You can't do anything now without people screaming political correctness gone mad. Like you can't do anything. Sure, Doctor Who has always been political. Um, it's just a question of um, sometimes it's subtle and then sometimes it's, it's like right in your face, like right in and you're like okay back, back off there. Um, so I can understand people's frustration when it's like right in your face and it's so obvious and um, so certain writers can do it well and so certain writers can you know y you get the well intention but okay no um I feel like as a showrunner Chris Chibnall she played her his strengths more I think Chris Chibnall is a, is a better showrunner than he is as an individual writer and I feel like he should focus more on this whole story arc of the series, the characters from from the start from A to B to the end of the uh, series. So what's their character development? You know, have a plot where he wants the series to go, and then he gives that to all the writers that he chooses, and then they write their scripts with his limitations, whatever, and then they submit the scripts, and he and he looks through them and he like approves them or he rewrites them if he feels them. Like as a showrunner, Chris Chibnall doesn't actually have to write any episodes of the series. He just has to ensure the the story arc, where he wants to go. He can rewrite them if they want. He has to approve them, but he doesn't actually have to write the episodes himself. He can guide them. But as a showrunner, he is kind of expected to. I think Moffat is a better individual writer than he ever was a showrunner. I think Moffat's a good example of a person who, when given free range um, just loses the plot. I think with most people it's easier to create something as when you're giving limitations or you have like guidelines. So, like for me as an actor it's easier 
to create a performance if we're getting certain rules so you have to do this in the performance you have to do that in the performance but if you're given free re free reigns where you have to create a performance and it can be of absolutely anything it's a lot harder to do because there's so many options and you don't know which one to go for i think out of all the showrunners uh russell t davis was the most balanced in terms of skill sets like he was a decent writer and like he was also a decent showrunner and i think a lot of people like to sh um you know, Mark Russell D. Davis and say, oh, Doctor Who was a soap opera. But he but he worked that very well. Like, Russell knew people love drama. And he, I think, out of all the showrunners, he managed to merge drama with sci-fi. And he, like, merged it so well that it worked. That, yeah, sure, Doctor Who was a, like, soap opera in, here, in his era, but it worked. Like, people were raving about it. Like, uh, casual viewers loved it. Doctor Who fans loved it. Like... For the most part. But no, that's just my But that's just my personal feeling, so let's just get on with this reaction. So enjoy. Hmm. That's a nice cake. The first woman married in Pakistan, did you know this? And I was the first Muslim woman to work in a textile mill in South Yorkshire. Grandad taking you dancing every Wednesday night. Oh. <laughs> I so miss that man. Now, I want to give you these things before it's too late. Nadja, these are some letters your father wrote to me when he was away. Don't read the filthy bits. <laughs> Sonia. Don't read the porn This there. is a present your grandfather gave me. I can't remember why, but it's nice. This is one way to celebrate your birthday. Now, Yasmin, my favorite granddaughter. What? <clears throat> Mommy, what? I've told you about well, that. I want you to have this. I mean, at least you ain't shy about having a favourite. Thank you. Was it, it was telepathic too. Don't call her a thing, Graham. And yes, she does have telepathic navigation, sort of. Shorthand for a very complicated process, which is way beyond your understanding. Tar very much. I only hang around here to be insulted. <laughs> Any object amasses all sorts of fragments. I just love Graham. I'm sorry. Through its life, the TARDIS can read it, like date stamps. What do you two reckon? Oh, yeah, love it. Pakistan. Never been there before. Another one off the bucket list, as long as there's no killer turtles. Yeah, <laughs> I'm well up for it. I'm sorry. Can I just what hear I? the story about the no, killer turtles? Looks pretty northern, Punjab. <laughs> what the hell? Hey, get out the road. Yo, what was really that? Sorry. Bit of a wobble. What just happened? Not sure. I didn't like it at all. What, did you have, like, a... Mm. Sorry, mate. Vision? Just getting our bearings been up from round here. Yeah, no kidding. Did you have like a high point of vision here? Though. You, need to... you look amazing. What are you doing here? I but don't not mess with timelines. But I thought, like my... Marty McFly. I'm sorry. Would your grandma see not you. remember so, yes. a girl that looked exactly like her granddaughter in sorry. the future? No. You can't be. You're not my the wedding in the Punjab. Bring it on. Oh, okay. Oh, so she's marrying someone that isn't hey, do you need to sing that? Oh, all the classics? Or latest hits, do you uh, not? Don't ever let him sing. We won't be saying long anyway. Just wanted to convey our best wishes and then head off. I love you, brother, but you're wrong. Oh. <laughs> Look! What? Demons! I told you these days were cursed. It's gone. Oh, okay. No far. We'll deal with this. Come on. Oh, Are they using the bumble music? Whoa. Are they teleporting? R.I.P. Anyone wearing headphones during so. that? They were faster than your bullet. Um, that was the stuff that was on the holy man's body. The stuff that they used to kill him. Oh, taking a look at that. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, don't just pick it up. Uh, you have desecrated the hive. Oh. The hive is sacred. Do you have to push your words into our heads like that? It really ah, so hurts. they are telepathic. I know. I knew my nan's story. 
She inspired me. If this is true, if this is her life, then she lied to me. Yeah, but maybe she just didn't want to tell you everything, you know. A woman's allowed to have secrets, even from her granddaughter. <laughs> and you've got to remember, yes, yeah, that girl in there, she ain't your nan yet. It's only later she'll decide how to tell it. And I honestly don't know whether any of us know the real truth of our own lives. Because we're too busy living them from the inside. So just enjoy it, yes. Live this moment and figure it out later. Easier said than done. No, no, I get that, but... Look at us. The things we're doing with the dock. We're in 1947. Women and. Yeah. No one will ever believe us. See, that's why Especially Graham is the best. He's just... Everything he says is so relatable, so trouble. true, and like... It must be the doc. He's just so well written and so well performed. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just gussing over Graham all the time. I need oil, water, tree bark, a saucepan, nine containers, an old newspaper, a touch of ox spit, a chicken poo, and a biscuit. Why is he not chicken poo? Why a biscuit? I love biscuits. Just wash your hands after you handle the chicken poo, because I'm, you know... Gotta think about the hygiene, Doctor. This is the best thing ever. Hmm. Never did this when I was a man. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's just like, what? Jokes. Yeah, that's right. My references to body and gender regeneration are all in jest. I'm such a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> and Breen doesn't think these are my best work. <laughs> but maybe if you had to prepare a body this morning, you wouldn't draw so well either. So. Is all that remains of our home, our people, every ancestor, all one dust. I didn't know. I'm so sorry. They died unwitnessed, unsaved. We were too late to grieve or honor them. But we who returned gave up a hundred generations to sift, to remember the lost dead, the unmourned. In time, it was all we knew. And now we travel beyond, seeking the unacknowledged dead across all of time and space. This is now the Thajarian mission to bear witness to those alone, to see, to bear pain so on the life actually as it villains. passes. As each one passes, we commemorate union. That's what Prime saw you do to Kunal. All we can strive to be is good men. And you, Prem, are a good man. Can I just, like, you know, keep Graham in my pocket, please? I am. Um... Like, can Graham be my granddad? Come like... on. Marriage. Oh. Oh, I swear, I swear to that God. Used to shoot the holy man. Your brother's rifle. Be quiet. What happened, Manish? Did it get out of hand? Did you scare yourself? Because you were too young for the war. You've never fought or killed anyone. I'm not scared of anything, because this is my time to fight. Fight for what I believe. Killing a man because he might marry a Muslim and a Hindu, and then pretend you knew nothing. Take your friends and leave. If you want to get out alive. What have you done? Who's coming? Oh, sweet Jesus. Future. You son of a bitch. You did that to your own bro. Oh my God. Um. Come 
You don't you do, you don't want to see this, Yaz. So it was a very, very character driven episode, very, very emotional and um, I, I can imagine there'd be a lot of people complaining about political correctness going out again, you know, we sh it was definitely, we should celebrate what brings us together rather than trying to see our differences and trying to divide people, it's, it's, it's a nice message I feel. It's particularly for young people and you know nowadays with everything and people are at the most divided and people turning against one another this mob mentality family turning against family it's you know it's it's devastating in many ways so it's um it's a nice issue to deal with although again the music was great and um, it was a lot different I, I liked how they went into that more style for the episode, but there were no villains. The villains weren't even villains, they were good guys. What was that about? I mean, sure, it was a nice little twist, so, but there was no threat in the, like, at least the other episodes had some form of threat. This was a very personal issue, more so for Yaz. Yeah, so There's more for the characters, it was like, as someone watching this, there was no threat for me, there was no, it was one note I think the episode was, where it was more meant to play with your emotions, and yeah, it was sad, it was sad what happened to the guy, and like, um, it's a very, the message was about how, you know, again, people being divided, not there in this conflict. But as an episode, it would have been nice. You see, Rosa, I think Rosa yeah, had more of an edge because like, um, the bit where she is about to sit down in that bus, there was so much tension in that one scene and it, the way it was in it, it was so powerful hitting. So this episode, it didn't capture the same emotions for me as when I was watching Rosa. Um, I get the message, I thought it was a nice message, I, I, I get the meaning, um, but again, it's... The, I want a proper villain, not just a villain in the sense of look at what, how bad, how humans treat other humans and society. I want like a proper villain, like a, an actual person, like a threat. That would have been nice, but I get why they didn't want to take away from the historical aspect. Because it is very hard to do sci-fi and historical. Um, sci-fi is one of the hardest genres to write, so to combine it with a very, very, tot um, very emotional and very touching story, or uh, like real life events, it's ca it's it's a tricky combination. So I get that. I've been Lauren. Um, thank you for watching this reaction, and I'll see you next week.